Hey, nerdlings, welcome to Attack of Opportunity. If you just reached into your pocket or pack to pull out some gear, you'd provoke an Attack of Opportunity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Today, a very special introduction to us attempting a vodcast, and a very, very special guest, Mr. Ask a Pathfinder himself, Michael Kasevin. Michael, welcome to the show. Oh, good night, mate. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Sorry, still uh, wrapping our heads around the difference between a uh, actual play podcast, doing an interview podcast, and a vodcast, uh, which Michael himself has actually personally taken the time to show us a few tricks, and we are eternally grateful. So, Mr. Ask a Pathfinder, can I call you Mr. Ask Mr. Pathfinder, or shall we just call you Mr. Kasevin? Oh, 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 please, no, Mr. Mr. Ask a Pathfinder was my father. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, call me Mike. Mike is uh, Mike is my uh, my preferred moniker, or, uh, or or you know, hey, you put that down, or uh, stop throwing trolls at me. Uh, the <laughs> These, uh, you know, general titles. Okay. So uh, the very first question that we absolutely love to ask everyone that comes on our show out of Attack of Opportunity is how did you actually discover gaming? Was there a defining moment where you found RPG tabletops, got into D20 type games? When, what made you decide that you were one of us, a nerd, a geek, a gamer away from the norm? Well, um, in terms of gaming, I, I've always been a nerd. I've always been kind of uh, a little geeky, but I was kind of a uh, closet geek, I suppose. Um, ever since I was a kid, I, I've been playing video games, and that was just the way I was brought up. My dad um, was always, you know, kind of really into trying to have the new and shiny thing available at any given time. So that afforded me a lot of luxuries growing up, especially access to uh, video games. Um, now I'm going to show my age here a little bit by saying, you know, every now and then my dad would come home from work and he'd have literally this little tiny tray filled with A drive floppy disks that had the latest game that had come out. And it, it was awesome. It was a great time to be to be alive. Uh, I remember floppy I, disks. <laughs> I grew I up in the floppy. 80s. <laughs> um, but I never I never really got into any kind of board game, uh, not for ages and ages and ages. And um, it was uh, almost a de almost a de just over a decade now, I think. I feel like it was around that time. Uh, I met my current partner, who uh, I'm still very happy with and uh, living with. And she introduced me to the concept of tabletop role playing uh, with a quick one shot of in the Forgotten Realms. And in a very typical video game of sense, I uh, I turned around and I said, "What? There's no computers, no graphics. I have to do maths. Get out!" <laughs> so you were addicted to Baldur's Gate first, and then found the tabletop later, kind of thing. Oh yeah, that was actually her hook. Uh, basically, it was a so you've played Neverwinter Night and Baldur's Gate. I said, like, "Yeah, I love those games." It's like, "Well, this is the game." It's like, "What?" No, it's not. It's like, yeah, look, we'll do, even do a game in Baldur's Gate. And I was like, all right, but none of this math stuff. Um, so, yeah, as uh, you know, I'm the young and precocious version of Ask a Pathfinder. Um, but I loved it. I seriously was addicted straight away. And, and ever since, I kind of just wanted to do more and more and more and more and more. And um, and it was very weird because she, she got to a point where she was like, I don't want to do it anymore. And I just kept going. And uh, the reason I kind of became a GM, as it were, was uh, because no one else wanted to. So I was like, fine, I'll run all the games. All the games, they're for me to run. I'll do them. You just shop and play. <laughs> and, um, and I'm... And I'm still doing that till today. That's exactly how I, how things go down. So what was the inspiration for you to sort of, um, you know, you're, you're at home, you're playing, you're playing with your friends or whatever. What was your inspiration to actually take it online, to take it to the public eye? Now, you have a sort of a podcast and a Q&A back and forth through Facebook, which is not the normal. Most people do a vodcast on uh, YouTube. We have a podcast on SoundCloud. Other people uh, swear by iTunes. You've chosen Facebook. And you're a little different. It's not just like a straight up podcast, are you? No, no. I, I've, I've actually got a very unique standpoint. See, uh, Ask a Pathfinder was never really created to achieve anything. Um, and that, I think, is what has kept it the way it has been for so many years. Uh, Ask a Pathfinder was actually created because I have friends who are idiots. And um, <laughs> being... being being 100% honest, I, I started Ask a Pathfinder for the sole purpose of going up to these, these friends of mine and saying, look, I have told you this shit so many times. I am sick to death of it. Just go to the, go to the Facebook page. 
Go look it up. I wrote a whole article on it, and I don't want to oh, ever hear you ask uh, me this question again. That's that's a, that's awesome. Like so many DMs burn game time at the beginning, end, or in the middle of a game, explaining stuff to players, and the guys that do get it are all sitting there going, "Oh, can we just get on with the game, please?" So you you started a Facebook page for your buddies, so they can yeah. use social media to get caught up in between weeks, so they're not actually burning game time. Is that what you're telling us? Basically, yeah. It was it was also something that if um, they needed a reference or something like, or even just kind of like a, oh well, I did really poorly this week. What could I have done better? I mean, while I love having those discussions, sometimes having those discussions is just when you say it, it just goes into the air and then vanishes and it doesn't really stick. Whereas if you've got an article written, you know, and the the player knows that the article's there, they they happily they happily jump forward and really get behind it. So um. So yeah, that's kind of why, where I started. And then uh, people started joining in. People started like coming in and asking me questions. Um, and that's kind of what took me into being just me and my group to me in the public eye as Ask a Pathfinder, because that's quite literally what people were doing is they were just constantly asking me. It's like, what do you think of this? Hey, what do you think of that? Um, and while I do the articles, which is very bloggish, uh, I am a very social person. I love talking to people. I love people asking me questions and being able to chat and find out not just, you know, here's some general advice for you, but I want to know what your thing is. What can I do to help your specific scenario? And so I started doing stuff on Discord, which uh, is a chat program uh, that um, that I that I host uh, a server on. And, and people come up to me in that and they, they ask me their questions. I, I've even had GMs like literally go, guys, look, I've got one hour before game session. Uh, two guys have pulled out. My plan isn't going to work and I need a short game to come up with. And I'll sit down with that person for an hour and come up with a game. Um, yeah, I noticed uh, your Discord handle is Dead Aussie. Is there a story behind that? Oh, yeah, no. I <laughs> the, the, the Dead Aussie gamer thing... Um, uh, like a long time ago, um, when I was looking at, hey, you know, I want to do some like streaming or some YouTube thing. Um, I, I took on the handle Dead Aussie Gamer because, well, let's face it, the Aussie internet is not great. And if you have an Australian on your team, 90% of the time you realize it because they're the, they're the guy who's dead. So I decided to embrace this culture about Australian gamers online and uh, call myself the Dead Aussie Gamer or in Australian calling yourself a dag um so uh, that was that, that was kind of that was kind of like it was kind of, it was a really good idea and it kind of didn't take off so i kind of i like i still like the gamer handle and so i keep it around but you know that's that's kind of where that came from i'm laughing because i know what a dag is i actually visited perth australia where you live to see my uncle and my cousins were like oh jeff you're such a dag and then i looked it up would you give us the oh, yeah. textbook definition for our audience? Okay, the textbook definition of, of what exactly a dag is, is um, when a shearer is like, you know, sort of shearing his sheep and stuff like that, sometimes uh, around the butthole of a sheep will be a clump of disgusting stuff, a mix of wool and shit. And fundamentally, that is what is considered to be a dag. Um the other the other kind of colloquialism for it is is, is basically you're an idiot you're a drongo you're uh, you're a buffoon you're you know <laughs> like you're a goofball like said you dag know. you're unnecessarily hanging there in your space basically yeah you you're you're sitting there just just wasted in space you know and that's kind of that's kind of how um how sometimes the games went so um, <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry i am getting you off topic here uh next oh, no, that's okay. next question for you yeah. is um now with the q and a or whatever um and the show do you have music that you use do you have outside sources that you use to you know fluff up your show or anything i noticed the map behind you and, yes yeah, and yeah. that was honestly that was one of the reasons that made us reach out to you because i saw that map and i know it's galorian but it was very very nostalgic for me to remind me of the old forgotten realm days where you would get those giant cartoon maps out of the box sets and you could start patching together this giant mural which i did in my basement 20 odd years back and um here you are being the guy and if you actually can you strike the pose that you actually have in your picture i love this pose strike oh, the pose um, for your yeah it's like yeah look what I, I, it's I, the, look yeah. what i got right it is, uh, it is. Yeah. i love i love i love my um i love my map um so yeah for those of you who you know are listening in the podcast uh basically the map it literally covers like my entire room it reaches the top of my ceiling down to my floor almost wall to wall um and it cuts it cuts my room in half so that sucks but you know it is a glorious map of the uh, inner sea um 
world from uh, from Pathfinder. Um, in terms, uh, to answer your question of you know kind of what kind of artwork or what kind of extra stuff I do to zhuzh up my um, my show and stuff. Uh, honestly, like um, it's kind of it, it's it's kind of a several things. Like for me personally, I don't do anything to zhuzh myself up, right? Because for me, I I just it's always just been a very honest show. It's been me just talking to you guys because I want to talk to you, and that's not a I want to talk to the public or I want to talk to an audience. It's like no, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, the individual, you know, and, you know, while I think, yeah, you know, an audience would appreciate things like my big map and, you know, really clever artwork and stuff like that. Um, that's never kind of been my mission statement. So I've never really gone out of my way to make anything particularly special or fancy or anything like that. However, that being said, um, through just the course of me doing this whole Ask the Pathfinder thing, I've met with some very talented, very amazing people who have uh, done their own shows and have um, graciously allowed me to come along. And um, I do like to put my best foot forward whenever I do yeah, this. Actually, I just caught the interview on Nerdarchy. And congratulations yeah. to that. That went off very well. I really enjoyed that uh, interview, especially around the 44-minute, uh, 20-second mark where you dropped our name. Thank you very much. Uh, but <laughs> it, it was an in-depth look far more than we have time for now. So check it out on Nerdarchy on YouTube to find out even more than we're going to get into today about Michael. Um and I'm just going to keep going down the question list here because I know we're really pressed for time. Um, are you anywhere else on the web or on the net besides uh, Facebook? Okay, the places you can find me if you are looking for Ask a Pathfinder, primarily Facebook and Discord. Um, those are the two very easy ones to, uh, to get. I do have a Twitter account. Uh, most of the time I'm using that mostly to share other people's content. I do occasionally post, but I am a very silly person who uh, doesn't really understand how these newfangled technology things work. So I'm slowly getting better at using Twitter. Um, I have also started a YouTube channel. Uh, now there's not much content on there. I've got a couple of playlists, but you can find that on YouTube as well, uh, which will also include my Guinness World Record attempt for the world's longest board game marathon, or at least um, a part of it. I'm trying to get the whole thing eventually highlight reeled or even put up raw, but you know, YouTube has a particular amount of time you can slot in and 83 hours is not it <laughs> i was actually going to get to that that's my official question list i was at a dollar store shopping with a wife just pick up some led bulbs and they had front row the world guinness for gaming for 2017 and the world guinness generic for 2017 and i went mike's in there and i flipped through it and i couldn't find you now i know you pulled this off i saw the 360 video it's epic panoramic in the room and what mm. first looks like a very narrow fisheye shot of just one person doesn't make sense if you scroll around and realize that it's a 360 video you can see the entire room and everyone around the table and you guys sat there in the same room with very little in the way of breaks for 83 hours straight running all six of the rise of the rune lords pathfinder adventure path yes mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that is absolutely correct. We had, we had, we did have some rest and we did have some sleep. Uh, there, there is a, a minimum requirement for safety. Obviously, that's done, uh, and it's following the Guinness Bo World Book guidelines. But, um, but yep, we we got through all of the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path. Uh, the very exciting thing there was. Uh, a lot of people thought we weren't going through the whole, whole, all the content or they thought we were going to skip some stuff. And we actually went back and calculated. We only skipped three random encounters. Uh, everything else was done completely organically. Everyone went to where they needed to go. And I all, even included three or four separate massive side quest missions that came along and they actually completed most of them as well so um so yeah we did actually get that's, through so much content <laughs> that's amazing have uh has anyone else tried this before was that your initial inspiration to try and pull that off or did you just pull this out of the hat and say guys this is what we're gonna do it's gonna put us on the map uh i'm gonna be i'm gonna be very selfish here like um look i've got some great friends and they are willing to do some crazy things just because i've asked them to um uh, this was always a brainchild of mine because for me, I, I, I've always wanted to reach the top for things. You know, I kind of always try to push myself forward and push myself higher. And I love the sound of a Guinness world record holding GM. You know, like I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy who, you know, is a professional GM, who is a Guinness world record holder, who runs his own Facebook page, who, you know, knows people from South Africa and, uh, you know, from the UK and from the USA, you know. Uh, that's always just kind of been my I, mean, I don't know it's 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 a narcissist thing i mean for those of you in the audience who who are narcissists you know exactly what i'm what i'm talking about it's about it's about how how, how you know how shiny 
your nameplate looks at the end of the day you know <laughs> yeah Definitely. there's there's a mix on the net of people that are doing it for money people are doing it for fame and glory and people that are doing to say like i just want to put this project out there and at the end say i did that you know and then on with the next project of your life and even m myself you know having trouble fitting my head through most doorways uh are we created role mongers for that purpose for a nostalgic to like try to actually do an adventure path which then suddenly turned into this and this and this and now here i am trying to do an interview show doing my best version of carson um and reaching out to other people in the community and saying, well, what are you guys doing? I know what I'm trying to pull off. Like, you know, what are you guys doing? And here you are in the early episodes, which brings me around to our final question. Um, now, when we first reached out to you, we covered more than you just appearing here on Tank of Opportunity. We're talking about a sort of semi-pro all-star cast to be the next thing. Where do you move on from Guinness? Where do we at Rollmongers try to move up in the world or get exposure and you pitched me an idea that I absolutely loved that I talked to with the guys and had to put down because we're just so new in the community we don't have that many connections about reaching out to up and coming YouTube content creators and up and coming podcasters that are playing Pathfinder that are playing Starfinder that are playing RPG tabletops and they're on their way up they still haven't like hit that big boom yet and but they have talent they have potential and we're going to try and grab onto a bunch of them and put them all together in a room and do something epic. And every single player will have their own podcast or YouTube content to say, hey, you want to see more of me? Go here. And it's sort of like the idea of like, Iron Man, Captain America, and but then, you know, there's the Avengers movie and they're all together. Thank you, Joss Whedon. And we are going to start to try to seriously, like we're still working through the red tape, um, but in this this year, 2018, we should have, we should get through pre-production, we should have it launched, and we should have it on the net before the year is out. And I just wanted to know your thoughts. What, um, what puts you on to that uh, where you're uh, because um, I want to talk to you about you actually work with Guy in Bacon Battalion. I saw you in the seasons. Yeah, yes. Um, so I, obviously, uh, I'm going to hit this on two fronts. The first thing, what inspired me to do collaborations was actually a wonderful and amazing woman by the name of Carla Harris. Uh, now, Carla is, uh, well, she was um, a producer slash market goblin for the Bacon Battalion. And I bumped into Guy as most people did. You know, I've watched his YouTube series and I kind of reached out and got in contact with him. Um, ironically, because I was having a major problem with one of the guys I was working with, because I, at the time, was working as a professional GM. Like, um, that is was and is still my, my primary source of income. Um, and, uh, you know, I was having this major problem. And because it was a public game, I couldn't handle it in the way that I normally would, which would be grab you by the freaking ear and throw you out a window. Can't do that. So, you know, I talked to Guy and I kind of worked it out. And I actually, ironically, I paid him to sit down with me for an hour. I just said, look, here's some money. Just sit down, have a chat. And he's like, all right. So we had a chat and we hit it off. We were, you know, I mean, even today, we're still great friends and, and all that sort of stuff. And I met Carla through that, that, you know, sort of interaction. And she was just so wonderful. And she was just so willing to help me out in every step of the way to um, build up my brand, to come up with ideas, to introduce me to people, to really kind of give me the courage to take those few steps forward. And um, it was actually and Carla she, that mentioned your oh, name to us. Sorry, I think I, think I lost. Sorry, it was actually Carla that um, mentioned your name to us. I'd reached out to Dum Dum Die and said, "Oh, you got your female GM and all female cast. I'd love to interview you." And we're still working through technical. And she technically would be the the interview that's supposed to be before you. And she actually dropped your name, and that's what made us actually read it, reach out to you. Carla's a lovely woman, and we have to thank her as well because without her, we wouldn't have found you, and we wouldn't be planning this next big bit. Well, well, there you go. So that that see that that was Carla's thing the whole time. Like Carla's just been always so supportive of like community and collaboration and stuff like that. And like I I I, I mean, you're dumb not to kind of take her advice. She like she currently runs several things. So there's Dum Dum Dice as you mentioned before, which is the all female podcast. But she also has her own YouTube channel. So if you ever considered doing you know something like what i do um definitely check out her channel uh the social bard which gives you tons of advice on how to run a youtube channel and how to like really make the most out of your experience um yeah anyway like i said moving from there um that was what inspired me to do collaborations in the first place then i saw um 
take uh, taking 20 uh, web DM uh, dawn forge cast and nerd Archie all get together and do save or die and I watched that and I was kind of like wow this is actually really cool and around that time was when uh, guy approached me about being part of uh, the bacon battalion and that was kind of cool because obviously there was myself and guy and simon who all kind of do some stuff but then we have freddie who's a voice actor and we've got jono you know you know it's it a nice cast of people with from varying skills but it wasn't really kind of a master gm class as it were it wasn't really a you know like a, a group of um you know people who kind of were, were were all doing that and were all kind of in the same vein or in the same uh, expertise so that's kind of what brought me into the idea it was what you know kind of trying to get into that state where we're not representing kind of the biggest the best and the brightest but representing a new wave a new a new group of people with maybe a whole bunch of different things to offer than the people who have forged the path before us yeah the up, you know, the, up, because, the up and coming the guys to watch for yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and like we're, we're uh, i mean obviously list. we're on that list <laughs> I feel, yeah, like I feel, <laughs> watch for us oh absolutely absolutely watch for us you know we're gonna <laughs> just sit there. i mean yeah uh, sorry i mean like look i'm australian there's only so much ass grabbing i can go with but to be perfectly frank um i think that um i just you know, at its core, want to play with some really great people. And I think so many people out there are just doing what I'm doing because they love the game. And that's who I want to game with. I want to game with people with the same kind of enthusiasm, vigor, and passion for playing an RPG that I have. Yes, people who take know. the time and money to buy maps. Yep. Thank you, sir. You were actually the inspiration for that new purchase. <laughs> uh, but no, I hear exactly what you're saying. That's the reason why we are in this. Is the reason why you know me and friends and that uh, ran into that. But I can like tell you my story because that's actually episode one of Attack of Opportunity. One of the cast members interview me, and we're here to interview you. So I have one last question for you, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Besides you working with role mongers and us trying to do that sort of semi-pro amateur watch for us up and coming cast, and you've put down, you've like you've done your world Guinness record, and in the, in the Nerdarchy interview, you said you know please don't break this because i will find you and i will just do it again <laughs> you're talking about how competitive you are and you know how you want the next thing for ask a pathfinder for the facebook page you can go on facebook and find michael kaseven at ask a pathfinder um what is the next step would you approach paizo uh to give you an example um one of the podcasts that i listen to is called the glass cannon podcast and troy lavalley and uh, joe o'brien are absolutely great down-to-earth couple of new yorkers that grab five people they put it together joe has a spin-off podcast called cannon fodder which is the behind the scenes look at theirs which was the inspiration for attack of opportunity for us to do hey we should do a behind the scene look at ours um i've emailed and pestered the crap out of one of their best voice actors skid meyer constantly i think he's getting sick of hearing from me um they are now up on twitch playing video games you know just content 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 they hit patreon recently and now they're going to put out a whole bunch of extra they're they're doing um the adventure pass of um the Atlante ones that's coming out. Skid's going to DM that. They do Disorganized Play, which is a look at them actually playing Pathfinder Society modules, and that's done under Joe. I really enjoy those. And they're strictly for the Patreon subscribers at the $5 or more. Um, and they went they went to PiazzoCon and they got in bed with Pazzo themselves. And now they are the official Pathfinder Piazzo podcast. Congratulations. Uh, I that's, that's fabulous. Damn it. They got there first. Um... <laughs> But what you're doing, like I said, I'm following in their footsteps with our stuff, but what you're doing is sort of completely different. And the next thing for you, like I don't want to talk necessarily like about marketing or about money, but uh, as, have you been approached by Paizo would be one question. Uh, another question would be beyond Facebook and Discord community. When, when you set up a server and people, fans, uh, famous or not, have direct access to you and advice, that's fabulous. I, I applaud you, sir, to devote that kind of time where you can just check your Discord and just chat you know, with the Joe Schmo public constantly. That's something that most people that are too busy doing their own projects don't have time to do. And you're making that time. And I think that's one of the things that separate you from most of the content creators is direct access to the fan base. Sure, they answer comments and you can email them the back and forth or whatever, but there isn't anything quite like that being on a live Twitch channel or being in Discord. And it's like, 
I know I'm talking to Michael Kefskin and he's answering my question, that type of thing. Um, what's the next step for you to build Ask a Pathfinder from there? Would you go marketing fame and go after Paizo? Uh, get on YouTube, get on, you know, one of the big industry type of things. Have you been approached? You're working with um, Guy Bacon Battalion who is connected and, you know, up and up and up type of thing. What's the next step for you or for your group to move forward? Sorry, not upward when I'm making it about fame, but to move forward. What's the next big thing for you? Um, well, that, that's actually a really interesting question. Um, there's, there's just so many things that I do. I, I am, I'm going to admit like outrightly, I am not good at business. I am not good at um, finances or producing or any of these kind of things. I, hell, I'm barely a pretty face, to be honest. Um, but what I am good at is I'm good at gaming. And that's kind of the only thing I've really ever wanted to share. Um, as for the future, Ask a Pathfinder is definitely going onto YouTube. Um, only because I want to make and produce more stuff for the people who've supported me all this way. Um, the thing is, is uh, I've kept Ask a Pathfinder free. I will give free advice. I will give free consultation. I will produce videos based on the stuff that you tell me. Uh, you know, even the even the I've even written homebrew content, homebrew classes, homebrew races, archetypes. Uh, conversions, all this kind of stuff. And I've put it on Ask Pathfinder for free, mostly because I don't own any of the property. But <laughs> with that being said, um, obviously there's only so far that can go. So the idea behind YouTube is to try and generate enough of an income to be able to produce more stuff that I can again, just give you guys because that's kind of, that's always been my goal. I just want to share more and more and more and more. Um, you know, like with YouTube and support from hopefully um, backers like Paizo, I'll be able to look at things like hiring editors or hiring cartoonists and artists to be able to produce stuff. Um, like Chumpface, for example, uh, is a goblin character I've been sitting on for quite a while now. And I've got this idea for a show. I've got this, um, the storyboards, I got the, uh, the plan all, all, all laid out, but I just don't have, you know, the, the, the cash lying around to be able to throw towards that project. Uh, and at the same time, make it free. So um, so that's where YouTube is coming in. It's going to hopefully allow me to generate a little bit of an income with it and be able to um, use that income to, you know, sort of rebound back into making Ask a Pathfinder stuff better and more accessible. Um, to answer the question about Paizo, uh, Paizo has not approached me, sadly. Uh, and um, recently I was having a, a talk with, with some very, very big people on like YouTube and Facebook and all of that sort of stuff. And they were actually surprised to find out that I'm actually still a massive subscriber to Paizo. Uh, I'm still paying Paizo for pretty much all the content that I'm getting and then reviewing and doing all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I've always done that because I feel like that is an inherently Australian feature. Like no one I know of has ever gotten to a position where they can ask for something like sponsorship. It's just not the way we're built. Uh, we grew up on something called scab culture, which is uh, if you basically ask for anything or if you ask for money or ask for a handout or ask for this or ask for that, um, it's kind of like a bad thing. It's kind of like a faux pas in a way. And I know sponsorship is kind of in that vein of like, I'm going to do work for you. I'm going to produce a product and you are paying for advertising space. And there is a professional exchange here. Um, it's just, I've never really been able to get myself to a point where I can ask anyone, even my, even my fans. I have so much trouble asking for the uh, support on Patreon because for me, it just like, it's, it's almost like pulling out teeth, but you know, with the support of some very helpful people, some very smart people, far smarter than I am. Um, I am going to be looking at approaching um, Paizo directly and saying, hey, look, you know, look, Facebook's great. Facebook's awesome. Facebook is still growing so strong. And I want to change platform. I want to go into YouTube and hopefully um, in the future, we'll see some support coming from there. And um, maybe at the very least, I don't have to keep paying for my subscription and uh, and they can cover that. That'd be nice. I mean, like, look, as, as far as a bare minimum goes, if I get if I get like, you know, free PDFs from Paizo, I'll, I'm I'm. I'm happy. I'm laughing, you know, because that that saves me a fair bit of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm. Good. They'll send it to I you. When my, you do it. Yeah, my, I think my girlfriend will at least appreciate that very, very, very much. You know, spending all the extra money. Oh no, we need this, honey. You know, I need to buy this. It's for you know, it's for yeah. the show. And it's like, well, are you ever going to read it, run it? Well, no. I'm just going to look through it. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, it's like so. Um, so, what did you just pick up? Uh, Blood of the Coven. Do you have any witch characters? 
I might. Let's talk about uh, the recent, uh, the actual horror show. You're into horror and you had reached out to um, Color. I'm sorry, I forget the name. Color already. Circuit. Color, Color circuit. circuit. And yeah, tell, tell us about that. How did that go down? That was really, okay, That that's just something I did not too dissimilar to how I approached uh, Raw Mongers when I came up with uh, a couple of my ideas earlier on. Um, I do a lot of prep work, right? Like my week is pretty much prepping for games, running games and doing all of that sort of stuff. And um, sometimes I like having Twitch in the background, just something, some white noise to kind of work with. And I came across this group of people who were just into video games and stuff like that. And the day I found them was like serendipitous because they were running a game of Pathfinder as a one shot. There was a whole bunch of them that had never played before, never kind of knew the rules and stuff. And they were running the game. And um, I really enjoyed myself. I was listening to them. They were having a great time. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I did the usual thing that I do. Now, um, again, remembering I have a bit of an ego is I listened to it and I went, oh, yeah, that's really cool. That's really nice. She's, you know, the GM's done an amazing job. She's, you know, kept everyone interested. She's made the rules easy. I can do a better job. And that's what I, I basically approached him with. I basically turned around and said, hey, I noticed you played a Pathfinder game. Uh, listen, I do this whole, all this stuff. How about I run a game for you guys? Huh? 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 Nudge, nudge, nudge. And eventually I coaxed uh, the producer, Dylan Ray, uh, into having a conversation with me. And from that point, he, you know, I just, I'm in. Um, so yeah, I talked to him about it and he loved my energy, loved the pitch. Um, and he wanted to do a one shot to kind of test how the waters would go. So we did a one shot of a horror adventure that I had been writing for the last eight years. Uh, it's a solid adventure, a lot of fun, and um, there's a whole other story involving this story, this particular adventure path, and I'll, I'll, I'll maybe talk about that if we've got time. Uh, but yeah, once um, once I basically um, ran the one shot, it, it blew up. It was a really fun um, thing. We had like I think anywhere between 14 and 17 people tuned in for the entire duration of the show, which is apparently good. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and people were asking for more. Lots of people were saying that they really love that kind of format. And um, this year they picked me up for a whole season. So I'll be doing um, this, the continuation of that same horror game. Um, well, we're, I'm already in the midst of it. So we had the first episode last week, which was kind of a cutting the teeth episode. And we've got a continuation on uh, this week uh, and obviously continuing on from there. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been very interesting. And the only thing I really looked for with these guys um, wasn't, you know, how professional they are or how, what great RPs they are, but just how genuine their enjoyment of gaming was. You know, it, it was very pure. And I kind of, I was very motivated by that. And I kind of want to put my best foot forward with these guys. And I wanted to produce a show that at the very, very least, I'm going to present something that's going to be a lot of fun for people who are going to really appreciate it. That's great. That's something like you've you've already been reaching out to the communities and, and networking. Like you said, it's kind of a full pod just to go, I can't do this unless I have money. And you, you got to give us money to do it because I want to quit my job and that type of thing. I can't speak for everyone else's personal circumstances, but we at Rollmongers, like we took a bank loan to cover some consolidated debt and whatever, but we took the extra money and we're investing it here in the podcast to show our viewers and listeners going, hey, we're committed to this. We're going to spend our money first until we're completely tapped out. Then maybe we'll think about Patreon and say, look, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. If you want these projects to go bigger or, you know, just if you really like us, please give us some Patreon money so that the government can tax it and Patreon can mess with it and that type of thing. So we're, we're just not ready for that ourselves. Um, but you seem to be the master of like of reaching out to someone else. It's like on their way up and saying, hey, you know, can I do this with you? Can I do it for you? I'm better. Uh, or you, you just networking, networking, networking. When I got onto uh, SoundCloud and looked around, the people there were saying, you know, the only way to really get going is not spamming your Instagram going, oh, look at me, just add this, you know, bam, 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 bam. It's to, you know, share the love. And you reach out to people and you're saying, hey, you know, can I use your stuff with my stuff and both of us benefit and yeah it's a cheap way to like get free music um recently we've reached out to uh kirk tonson and um tiver on soundcloud because they do these epic epic orchestra scores of music that emulate john williams and we're going to use that in our star wars podcast our actual play we shot first and to have that kind of resource and to be able to use it without getting into all the costs of professionals, you're, you're marketing them for them. 
if anyone doesn't see like if they if you contact someone and they like oh they just want to use my stuff and they just want to make their podcast better they don't see the light it's like hey someone is asking you to take your hard work and put it up in bright lights yes they're using it in their project but there it is you get credit for it you you know your name is being spread out more 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 and the more you panoramically put yourself on the net the better your chances of being discovered people tuning in listening and that's got to be the end game not how many subscribers you have but that you've tapped into the audience that you were building your project for now you and i are a bit of old school gamers and we're doing this like for love of the game and for us it's the next evolutionary step we've hosted people we've had games over we've we've done it for friends or whatever and now we're kind of like putting something down on tape as it were uh you know make writing a book my novel of this kind of thing um for prosperity as much as to expand you know the love of what we're doing uh, which brings me to my next question to you. Um, how long can you keep this up versus your day job? Now, most of us have a regular day job. Nine to five, we slug, we go home, and then we get into our hobby. You've lucked out. You're living the proverbial dream or what we think, you know, geeks, the North American dream. You actually game for a living. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I am I am the subject of a lot of ire online. Um, I am very proud of it, and I, look, I mean, like I said, uh, ego being what it is, I am also very proud of it. Uh, I am actually a, by profession a a professional game master. It is literally my job. I get paid um, to run tabletop role playing games, other board games with kids uh, at a local youth center. It was. Um, it was actually quite serendipitous that it happened because uh, at the time I was literally staring down the barrel of a very, very large cutback for the company I was working for at the time and I needed to find new avenues of work and I was just walking around like trying to figure out what to do. And I thought, you know, because literally the only marketable skill I had um, was the ability to, you know, play role playing games. So I walked into the youth center and just simply asked them about, hey, look, you know, um, how do I get a community program working how do i how do i do this do i like give you guys an ad will you kind of send people my way how does this all go down and they asked for a presentation which i gave um and at the end of it it was kind of really funny because they they just they had no clue what i was talking about and they just said hey look if we give you like two grand can you go away and do something with it and i was like if you give me a hundred i could go away and do something with it i mean yes yes i can you know i've absolutely and um and they 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 what they ended up with was um was basically me uh, I joined their team that week and I just ran games and even right now we're one of the biggest and most popular programs that are run out of my youth center. Um, and the way that that kind of impacts me is that I love this hobby so much, right? Playing the games at the youth center, playing the games with my friends and playing the games for people online, you know, uh, like for shows and stuff like that. They are, they have a completely different feel. And none of them seem to sort of get to a point where I feel burnt out on any of them. Like, I don't sort of get to a point where I'm like, oh, damn, you know, I've been... Actually, Sunday's a really good example. Uh, up to recently, our Bacon Battalion episode schedule was on a Sunday. Now, my Sundays, every single week for the past three years has been... Well, uh, sorry, at least, sorry, while I was doing the Bacon Battalion, was um, 8 o'clock, start in the morning, head down, start role-playing at 8.30... Have lunch at about midday. Continue role playing till about six thirty. Quick nap between say seven and nine o'clock, and then nine thirty, ten o'clock. Bacon Battalion recording till one one thirty in the morning. And that was every single week. We just kind of bam, 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 and just kept doing that over and over and over again. And this was, of course, the Sunday following a Saturday evening game, which went from like eight at eight p.m. to like midnight. But because they were all so different, because playing with my friends is different, playing at the youth center on Sunday is different, playing with uh, the Bacon Battalion crew is different, I never get to that point where I've just felt like I'm burning out or I don't want to do this anymore, I don't want to play anymore. Um, quite the contrary, I find myself always on the lookout for new games or one-shots that I can be a part of or just even... Um, even sort of like cameoing in certain things as a as an NPC, you know, anything. Uh, yeah, I can actually, get my... we're, we're we're we've reached out for Michael for more, just, uh, far more than just that 
all-star cast. Anyway, my editor is making eyes at me because we've gone way over time, but we would love to have you back on the show if you wouldn't mind in the future, especially after we get some of these projects running. Uh, yes, preferably not at 2.30 in the morning, but uh, as, as mentioned before, I am very, 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 very easy to contact. And at the same time, I am also completely insane. And for some reason, I am already up at this period of time. I'm more than happy to uh, to join you to shoot the breeze, as it were. So we've been talking to Michael Kasevin of Facebook's Ask a Pathfinder. You can find him on Discord. He has his own server to ask him questions. Reach out to him, especially if you are stronger and more powerful than we are and give this wonderful, wonderful gentleman a leg up. Uh, so in closing, I'm GM Jeff. You've been listening to this Attack of Opportunity where we've attacked Ask a Pathfinder, Michael Seven. Thank you again so much for being on the show. My pleasure, man. 